And we're live, I think, maybe. We got audio, yay! I still remember how to do this. So it's Monday, November 18th. Yes, November 18th. Uh, had a real busy weekend, not a whole lot of painting going, um, but did a, we had the uh, GigaCon, Grand Melee. Forgot what it was called. I'm really tired. <laughs> uh, it was a long weekend. It was a really fun weekend. Uh, I got Best Chaos. So that means that I didn't make the top four, but uh, I had the Best Chaos Army out of what was left. So um, a, a Slanesh list won the tournament, and I got beat by it on the last game. Like, yeah, I got trounced. <laughs> but... Anyway, uh, I wasn't going to do a, like a, a serious paint stream today, but last night I came up with an idea for my little Mortec guards because uh, I'm still searching for a paint scheme that I want to do. Uh, we did the one with the green, and we did another one with the ivory, and I just neither one of those is really working for me. So I uh, thought of something last night, and uh, I was watching uh, The Toys That Made Us, and the He-Man song came on. And suddenly I'm painting this Joker like Skeletor. Or at least loosely like Skeletor. So, with that being said, let's jump over here. So, we're back to our bone white uh, little skeleton. They, they are tiny. There's our painted one. That's the more tech guard that I did the last time. I mean, it's good, but I, I just, I don't know if I want my whole army to look like that. So, I uh, decided to try something. So, what we're going to do is we're going to pop that shield off, because we we're, the bone underneath is going to be the harder part of this one. All this bone and everything that he's actually made out of. It's just poster putty holding the shield on, so no big deal. We're going to go... If you remember right, uh, in the He-Man cartoon, Skeletor was a nice bright yellow. Well, that would look ridiculous. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little bit of this Ogren camo. And it's a, well, I guess on that it looks really bright yellow. But um, it's a, it's not, it's not bright, bright yellow. It is not this color yellow it's very muted it's sort of grayed out so we're gonna take a little bit of that wrong brush and we're gonna throw a little bit of this down here on the palette i'm gonna see if i can mute this out even more we're gonna take a little lamy medium that's the clear stuff. I'm going to put that in with that. Just a couple of dabs of that to thin this out. Because I really want it thin. So I used, uh, was it the Wraith Bone? It's the contrast primer, but it's just sort of an off white. And I'm going to take this and we'll see how this goes basically this is going on just about like a wash um, it's thinned out really good let me try to get a little closer so you can actually see what's going on here I'm not trying to get like a really thick coat on there. I want that gray to sort of pop around. I don't want this cartoony yellow, but I want it yellowed, if that makes sense. So 
So I see Robin's in here. And Robin's probably a little upset because yesterday when I talked to her, I said that I was probably, um, <laughs> we were at the shop this weekend and on one of the little end caps at the end of the, uh, in the store, there's a little display and it had primed My Little Pony figures. That's right. My Little Pony. And so one of my other buddies, thinking it was funny as hell, may have picked up Twilight Sparkle and Pinkie Pie and said, you're painting these. Because, you know, I just painted an entire forest for him. Why not paint those? <laughs> so sooner or later, when you see me painting Twilight Sparkle or... Pinkie Pie, you'll know why I'm painting those. And I told Robin I was probably going to be painting Pinkie Pie today, and then I got this ideal, and I sort of went off script. Sorry, Robin. We'll get to them, I promise. Pinkie Pie's first. Mmm, I don't know. Probably. Alright, so I'm just going around all the bone spots. Anywhere where the interior bone is showing. Because, I, I mean, let's face it, his armor's bone too, so. Um. You know, any spots where the that interior bone is showing, I'm going around and getting into the yellow. Like I said, it's not a bright, bright yellow. It's just... Well, I guess on that camera it looks bright yellow. There we go. That's a little closer. I guess under the light it really darkens or brightens up, but there we go. It's not that bright a yellow. But we're going to take a few. We're going to... um. We're going to put some stuff over the top of it, and it'll leave tone it down. Yeah, I can talk. Um, it'll tone it down even further from this. Go around, get the arms here and the hands. I'm not being real careful around that grip because I'm going to go back with a darker color over the top of it. So I'm not worried that that's going to affect it too much. This is one of those times where I'm, I definitely want that inner color done first. And what happens to the armor isn't quite as a, or the outer part of the armor isn't quite as important. So up into the shoulder, back around. There's some little recesses and stuff I want to make sure that color gets into, or it'll just look funny because. Yeah. And 
inside of his arm. All right, sit him there for a second and let some of that dry up just a little bit. On the inside of his shield, there's his arm and his, <clears throat> basically where he's holding onto the shield. Turn it yellow. But I am trying to be a little careful around because I know the inside of that shield I'm going to do in wildwood, which is contrast and everything will bleed. Anything that's underneath it will show. <sighs> So I'm going to jump over to a metallic real fast because that yellow needs to dry a little bit, but I don't necessarily want to do the arm, the big panel armor yet because I'm sort of being my, when I dry brush over the top of that, it's going to, it would hit that and mess that up. So there's no point in shit doing that just yet. I bring myself a separate one for metals and still, there we go, get out of there. Crap. Anyway, so this is just uh, cold steel, it's sort of like gunmetal gray I guess. And we're just going to coat the blade down here. around on that. I had done that blue on the uh, on the other one. Wasn't a big fan of it. And plus like a ton of folks are doing that. So I'm trying to come up with something that looks you know, I want it to be my army, so. So just a good coat of the silver across the sword. find some wildwood this contrast so we'll just grab it straight out of the pot just a little bit on the tip of the brush the inside of these is a you, there's a wood grain on the inside of it I just want to where that's at. Hit it with just a little bit of wildwood. Not too much. Doesn't I don't want it like real real dark, but just enough to where you know that that's a different material in there. Top. There we 
go. The contrast really jumps into like the little recesses and stuff. And so you get where that where the wood is on it, it dives into those and just sort of does the work for you. So is anybody really gonna see that? Probably not. But I'd know it was there and it would drive me bonkers. still see a couple of wet spots on the on this where I put it's just where the paint was pooling in certain spots which is fine want to get an idea of this is of is this gonna work all right oh, looking for a dry brush looking for a dry brush that's a big dry brush all right so we're gonna take a little bit of the wraith bone again it's a just an off-white color very light bone. We're definitely going to need to shake that. So just a little bit on the end of the brush and then just go to like paper towel. No joke, wipe 95% of it off. So about the time that you feel that it really, you've got everything off the brush, double check it because you're going to see a couple of spots that you missed and make sure that that's wiped off because you don't want just wet paint going on there. And then I'm just going to come back across the face with that wraith bone. And give it a good dry brush. Now, with me not painting the armor yet, the armor's in Wraithbone, so anything that I hit on it right now, it doesn't matter. Because I'm dry brushing the same color that I primed it in. So, right now, if you're going to hit it, that's the time to do it. So then we're going to go back to his legs. I don't want to hit it real heavy, but I want some of that white. I want the yellow to be underneath the white. I don't really know how to describe what I'm looking for here. In other words, I want to do it like, like Skeletor, but I don't want just bright yellow bone. I want to make it look like the bone's been like discolored by something. Bone's aged, I guess. That's what I'm trying to go for. So, 
Now he's got Let's see if I just move the light away from it. If that helps. Guess not. So it's not a bright, bright yellow. It's just a sort of a hint of the yellow and everything. So for the armor, we're going to go with a purple, uh, Nagaroth Knight. It's a dark, dark purple. I mean, it's pretty dark. A little bit of water out of the pot, not that much. Mix it around. Let's see where we're at. Yeah, that's good. All right, so we're just doing this with the the lower part of the armor, the plates of the armor. really gonna have to watch is right here at the back because that purple will jump all over that yellow if we let it get in there and if I hit the part that's supposed to be yellow with the purple it will never look yellow again part of this down through the root and where the ribs would be underneath the arm being careful not to hit the arm right along the bottom remember earlier I said I didn't care if the yellow went this way but I can't get this the other way so then right up next to the arm again keep it off the yellow because there's such a big gap in here we'll have to be careful but push that into the inside there go back along Just like that. So, that thinned out pretty good. So, we're going to have to go back one more time and get to go to darken up. There we go. I don't know what that is on my computer that keeps bonging, but right 
here along the back. First coat sort of just tinted the white. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? I think I forgot to mute everything. Usually I mute everything, but I may have forgot to mute it today. Purple, purple, purple. Definitely. So I had a lot of fun this weekend. Got to play some folks we, we had some folks come in from out of town we had some folks i believe from nashville we had some folks from uh, south carolina come in it was a lot of fun there were a lot of folks there folks i'd never got to play before uh, i got to play against armies i'd never played against before um I got to play different versions of armies that I'd played before, but never played like that list or seen some of the stuff that they could do. And wow. I got to play against uh, KO. Dart, co Quadrant, the Bubble Dwarfs. Quadrant, Quadrant, Overlords. Imagine steampunk dwarves that fly in giant metal balloons. You know, because why the hell not, right? But the thing with their army is they are very shooty shooty. And yes, that is a technical term. And I found out if you close in on them really, really fast and kill them really, really quick, they don't get to shoot you that much. So we'll let that dry for a second. Um, we're gonna take do, 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 do. Ink by Darkness. Sure, a dark bluish green. Put a little bit of that over there. So I'm just going through here and doing a little butt flap that he's got. I'm not sure why he found it necessary to uh, cover up, but, you know. 
He did, so we're going to paint it. Just make sure that around there's these little tears and stuff in the in the cloth. I just want to make sure that some paint gets into those so we don't have white peering out at us. So we'll let that dry. We'll have to do one more little coat over top of that. We'll grab some non, non, non oil. Up here on that purple. You don't want to get too much of this because then it'll start running everywhere. Up here on the purple, we're going to go over that really dark. We'll probably have to do it a couple of times to get it to darken out, but we want it really, really dark, almost a black. So, right through there, cross, down his back. We just want a little bit of that purple shine to come through. We don't want it to. We want it pretty dark. Ooh. Thumb tried to lock up. That wasn't good. So just a little bit over there. Underneath the arm. Around there to the top. On his shoulder, back down. Don't forget up underneath there because that's going to be dark. Then on down here and around on these. Like I said, we'll have to do this a couple of times because of the color that I'm going for is almost a black with a purple tint not purple with a black tint so there's that a little bit more through there some more in the back go around the back underneath his arm gotta stay off the parts that we painted yellow already Put a little bit more down. Gotta watch it. My brush is trying to mess up. A little bit more on this shoulder. Catch the edge, go underneath, and around on that front edge. So that's darkening up. You can see it. Probably one more pass on that. We're going to let it dry for a second. I want this a little darker down here where you can sort of see that the wraith bone sort of, sort of still poking through. We're going to put another coat of that on there. One, it'll smooth it out, and two, it'll make it darker. that
trying to catch all the little bits there. That instantly darkened that up considerably. So I'm going to go back around with the non oil again, give it another shot. shoulder around back down his back so now that's sort of turning into that really dark dark purple that I'm looking for seconds here Well, dang it. I didn't write that down. Whoop. Look out. Where are you going? Oh, yep. All right. So we are going to. Take the non oil and put it on top of that. And darken that out too. Just be careful around the legs. Try not to get that across. It will tint that stuff. Now it's all in the way. I can't see crap. There we go. Let's go back and get that colored up. One more shot that will appear on the top. That armor is darkening way up. It's still a little purple. And I want it just a little bit less than that.
so now it's a really really dark almost a black on the purple the camera is actually picking it up a little brighter than what it looks like in person but that's all right back down here on the cloth we're gonna put another layer of that on there Darkening that up. While we're at it, we're going to take a little bit of it and put it onto this blade. It's pooling up there at the bottom. I don't necessarily want that dark, dark pool, so I'm just gonna take and touch the brush to it and let it suck some of that paint out, so we don't end up with a really, really just dark spot right there. Stone. I'm looking for Mechanica Standard Gray. We're going to put this up before it ends up all over my desk. That's going to be stronger. Yep. There it is. Hiding in the back. Take a little bit of that paint, put it down here. Switch brushes because this one's acting up a little bit on the point. So that top part. Of the armor. We're gonna come back and put that into a gray. Sorry about not being so talkative today. I really am tired. <laughs> we had a great weekend up at Gigabytes. It was a uh, five-game tournament. Uh, that's the first five-game tournament that I've ever played. I've only been really playing. They just, uh, I've only been playing for a year. So um, started actually in January. So I've played a bunch of little, you know, two and three gate you know like not two but i've played tournaments where we played three games in a day on a saturday and then 
called it quits. But I've never played a two-day tournament with five rounds. Um, really liked it. You really got... feel I mean you got to play like a full game you didn't feel like you cut it short at all you also got to see some stuff that you normally wouldn't have seen especially with everybody coming in from all over that was awesome thanks for coming guys um, got to play folks that I'd never played and see armies I normally wouldn't see um, it was a lot of fun. Um, I played against Stormcast on my very first match, which is my old army. That's what I used to play, or that's what I started off playing. And so I was pretty familiar with it. sort of knew what it was going to try to do and how to shut it down. Then I played KO, the Bubble Dwarfs. And to be honest, that's only like the second time I've ever seen them, and it's the first time I've ever seen them at 2,000 points. I was a little nervous about it. Especially with the uh, amount of shooting and everything that they do. Wasn't sure how I was going to get past that one. But I got their ship really, really fast. And then did okay from there. Yeah, he also had a uh, Gotrick. It's the first time I've ever had to play against him. He just, like, I, I just tried to keep my big guys out of him. Um, and I let a, one of my uh, chariots, the blade br exalted chariot with a blade bringer, I let that do the work because it does nothing but single wound hits. Gotrick cancels out anything that's not that's like more than one wound. So just that gray around there. We'll come back and do that gem over. We'll have to put like a brighter color on it, but it'll be all right. Alright, so we got the purple down, we got that gray out around it. And because it's one of my models, we're going to take Nolan Oil and put it on that gray. We're not going to go for jet black though, we're just going to Put that wash on top of it and let it shade it a little bit. Around there, down there, out onto the shoulder. Make sure I got all that. darkens up that gray. Ta-da! Alright. So we got the yellow down. 
We've got that purple washed up to where it's almost black, but that purple's still showing through a little bit. We'll put a little more on that cloth there. I want that a little bit darker. <laughs> uh, no, I decided not to go full Skeletor. <laughs> John Galvin is now heartbroken that I didn't do the bottom in blue. So. Let's see where we're at. take D-Mat Hide. I'm going to put a little bit of that down. Not a whole lot of it because we don't want to run like a big thick line of it. Let's close this before I knock it everywhere. Just a little bit. I'll start back here on the back. Just along the edge. We'll run a little bead of that. Trying to run a little. Line of this. Right there at the edge of that armor. again I'm trying to run like a really thin line so I get real quiet sorry I start holding my breath too
the bottom. Thin little line back here along his back. And down the back of this, we gotta keep out of the bone though, because that yellow will not hide this. Right here around, there's a couple little notches in the back there. We'll just put a little bead of that at the top and like right at the bottom of it, in the circle, we'll put a little notch. For the highlight and right there underneath his arm as it leads up there right around the edge on the other side down the back there along that leading edge up under his arm and then again on the top these right there at the bottom and we'll give a little shot right there across the top of that bone plate So now we've got cool. So now the uh, that purple's going in. on some of that other stuff to dry. Oh, let's let's do this. Where's my Way Watcher? We're gonna take a little bit of the Way Watcher green, it's just a green glaze. I don't want too much of it, just a little bit. On the blade here, I'm gonna go and just Give it a little shot with the green, especially like up at the, down at the bottom, and up here along the top. Oh wow, I was way off camera, sorry. I was actually trying to get that down to where you could see it, but apparently I went too far. So it just gives that blade a little bit of green. 
because it's glazed, it's going to start to try to pool down here at the bottom. I'm going to pull just a little bit of that out. I'll have to keep an eye on it. Or I'll end up with a green tipped blade. So it doesn't do anything drastic to it, it just gives it a little bit of color. Makes it look not 100% normal. Throw the Way Watcher in there. We're going to uh, go for just a little dab of Eel Sun Scarlet. there in his eyes. We're going to We're gonna make those bright red. Hit the edge. All right. Well, so what we'll do is we'll clean that up as best we can. There we go. We'll let that dry, and then I'll use a little wraith bone to come back around it and hit right there there we go so now his little eyes are all red let's see mm. yep, I'm turning it the wrong way you can't really see it it's too overshadowed but Whatever. He's got two little glowing red eyes in there now. So we're going to grab a little Slanesh Gray. Give that a little bit. Right at the very, very edge. We don't want a whole lot of this. We don't want the full line of it. there a little bit through this corner around the corner there. <coughs> oh, 
sorry. Right at the very top corner, we'll give a little bit there. To the very bottom, these little holes where it's catching the light. Just a little bit right here. there maybe just a little bit down here because I think you might be able to see it when that shields in place getting there so what we'll do is we'll come back with a little bit of silver and do some lines on the weapon to bring some of that back out brighten it up um, there's a black bone recipe that I'll use on this it'll be uh, abandoned black and I believe stone uh, storm vermin fur to bring some highlights back on that to get it darkened up and then uh, the shield will be done in the same uh, purple with the gray arm or with the gray on the top and what we'll do is we'll take that storm button there we go we'll do that real quick before we go Stone. What we'll do is we'll run it right here along the top of this gray. Boop, 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 boop. Just taking the Dawnstone and run it on this part that we washed with the Dawn Oil on the Mechanicus Standard Gray. We're just doing a little edge highlight all around it. Down these little spots where it, that bone sort of makes like a almost looks like a ball joint and along the top of the neck give that a little shot and right here at the top of this gym thing we'll give that a little bit right there coming out there, a little line going back there, there we go, just something to make that gray stand out a little bit more, let's see if we can get up focus, we'll do a little edge highlighting around the, the uh, cloth there, fix some of that back out, actually I might just go and do that to purple, to match out. Or no, 
there we go there's where the blue is going to go john that that's going to blue so what we'll do back i'll come back and do this in the uh the fang because that green's just not working with the purple but we'll do the uh we'll do the blue down there on the cloth to bring that blue into it and then the shield will be done up in that same armor uh, as usual, I will show you the pics when I get done with it. I'll put those up on Instagram. Because uh, we're about an hour and 15 in today. So we're going to knock it off for today. Uh, maybe I'll get some sleep and stuff and we'll actually pick up on something tomorrow. Maybe it'll be My Little Pony. Maybe it won't. I don't know. We'll see. Anyway, uh, thanks for everybody that helped organize the um, GigaCon Grand Melee over the weekend. It was a great time. Uh, I know Kai and John and Talon and uh, I know the, I know Zach helped some. Uh, a bunch of folks pitched in to make it go really want, uh, to make it go really well. Kai was run it, heading it up, and it it went great. It was a great time best tournament it's first two-day tournament i've been to but it was the best tournament that i've been to um that was it was really really fun anyway everybody have a good day stay warm and go paint something Thank you.